Hinduism has three sustaining pillars, temple worship, scripture, and the guru-disciple tradition. Around these, all spiritual disciplines revolve, including prayer, meditation, and ritual worship in the home and temple, study of scripture, recitation of mantras, pilgrimage to holy places, austerity, selfless service, generous giving, good conduct, and the various yogas. Festivals and singing of holy hymns are dynamic activities. Temples hold a central place of importance in Hindu life. Whether they be small village sanctuaries or towering citadels, they are esteemed as God's consecrated abode. In the temple, Hindus draw close to the divine and find a refuge from the world. God's grace, permeating everywhere, is most easily known within these holy precincts. It is this purified milieu where the three worlds, physical, astral, and causal, commune most perfectly, that devotees can establish harmony with God, the gods, and their angelic helpers, called devas. Traditional temples are specially sanctified, possessing a ray of spiritual energy connecting them to the celestial worlds. Temple rituals performed by Hindu priests take the form of puja, a ceremony in which the ringing of bells, passing of flames, presenting of offerings, and intoning of chants invoke the devas and gods, who then come to bless and help the devotees. Personal worship during puja may be an expression of festive celebration of important events in life, of adoration and thanksgiving, penance and confession, prayerful supplication and requests, or contemplation at the deepest levels of superconsciousness. The stone or metal deity images enshrined in the temple are not mere symbols of God and the gods. They are not mere inert idols, but the forms through which divine love, power, and blessings flood forth from the inner world of the gods into this physical world. Devout Hindus adore the image as the deity's physical body, knowing that the god or goddess is actually present and conscious in it during puja, aware of devotees' thoughts and feelings, and even sensing the priest's gentle touch on the metal or stone. Priests, known as pujaris, hold a central place of honor and importance. Each temple has its own staff of priests. Some temples appoint only one, while others have a large extended family of priests to take care of the many shrines and elaborate festivals. Most are well trained from early childhood in the intricate liturgy. These men of God must be fully knowledgeable of the metaphysical and ontological tenets of the religion and learn hundreds of mantras and chants required in the ritual worship. Generally, pujaris do not attend to the personal problems of devotees. They are God's servants, tending his temple home and its related duties, never standing between the devotee and God. Officiating priests are almost always married men, while their assistants may be unmarried young men or widowers. Hindus consider it most important to live near a temple, as it is the center of spiritual life. It is here in God's home that the devotee nurtures his relationship with the divine. Not wanting to stay away too long, he visits weekly and strives to attend each major festival and to pilgrimage to a far-off temple annually for special blessings and a break from his daily concerns. For the Hindu, the underlying emphasis of life is on making spiritual progress, while also pursuing one's family and professional duties and goals. He is conscious that life is a precious, fleeting opportunity to advance, to bring about inner transformation, and he strives to remain ever conscious of this fact. For him, work is worship, and his faith relates to every department of life. Hinduism's spiritual core is its holy men and women. Millions of sadhus, yogis, swamis, vairagis, saints, and satgurus who have dedicated their lives to full-time service, devotion, and God-realization, and to proclaiming the eternal truths of the sanatana dharma. In day-to-day -day life, perhaps no facet of dharma is as crucial as the spiritual teacher or satguru. These holy men and women are a living spiritual force for the faithful. They are the inspirers and interpreters, the personal guides who, knowing God themselves, can bring devotees into God consciousness. Hindus believe that the blessings, 
whether a look, a touch, or even a thought coming from such a great soul helps them in their evolution, changes patterns in their life by cleaning up areas of their subconscious mind that they could not possibly have done for themselves. They further believe that if his Shakti is strong enough and if they are in tune with him enough, they will be empowered to really begin to meditate. In all Hindu communities, there are gurus who personally look after the spiritual practices and progress of devotees. Such preceptors are equally revered, whether they are men or women. In few other religions are women allowed such access to the highest seats of reverence and respect. Within the Hindu way is a deeply rooted desire to lead a productive, ethical life following dharma. Among the many virtues instilled in followers are truthfulness, fidelity, contentment, and avoidance of greed, lust, and anger. A cornerstone of dharma is ahimsa, non-injury toward all beings. Vedic rishis who revealed dharma proclaimed ahimsa as the way to achieve harmony with our environment, peace between people, and compassion within ourselves. Devout followers tend to be vegetarian and seek to protect the environment. Many individuals of all faiths are concerned about our environment and properly preserving it for future generations. Hindus share this concern and honor and revere the world around them as God's creation. Their traditions have always valued nature and cared for it. They find it natural to work for the protection of the Earth's diversity and resources to achieve the goal of a secure, sustainable, and lasting environment. Selfless service to God and humanity, known as seva, is widely pursued as a way of softening the ego and drawing close to the divine. Charity, dana, is expressed through myriad philanthropic activities, especially feeding others. Hindus wear sectarian marks, called tilaka, on their foreheads as sacred symbols, distinctive insignia of their heritage. Rather than burial, they prefer cremation of the body upon death, which quickly releases the soul from its earthly frame, allowing it to continue its evolutionary journey. Perhaps one of Hinduism's most refreshing characteristics is that it encourages free and open thought. Scriptures and gurus encourage followers to inquire and investigate into the nature of truth, to explore worshipful inner and meditative regimens to directly experience the divine. This openness is at the root of Hinduism's famed tolerance of other cultures, religions, and points of view, capsulated in the adage, ekam sat vipra bahuda vadanti, meaning truth is one, the wise describe it in different ways. The Hindu is free to choose his path, his way of approaching the divine, and he can change it in the course of his lifetime. There is no heresy or apostasy in Hinduism. This, coupled with Hinduism's natural inclusiveness, gives little room for fanaticism, fundamentalism, or closed-mindedness anywhere within the framework of Hinduism. It has been aptly called a threshold, not an enclosure. Dr. S. Radhakrishnan, renowned philosopher and president of India from 1962 to 1967, summarizes in his book, the Hindu view of life. The Hindu recognizes one supreme spirit, though different names are given to it. God is in the world, though not as the world. He does not merely intervene to create life or consciousness, but is working continuously. There is no dualism of the natural and the supernatural. Evil, error, and ugliness are not ultimate. No view is so utterly erroneous. No man is so absolutely evil as to deserve complete castigation. There is no hell, for that means there is a place where God is not, and there are sins which exceed his love. The law of karma tells us that the individual life is not a term, but a series. Heaven and hell are higher and lower stages in one continuous movement. Every type has its own nature, which should be followed. We should do our duty in that state of life to which we happen to be called. Hinduism affirms that the theological expressions of religious experience are bound to be varied 
accepts all forms of belief, and guides each along his path to the common goal. These are some of the central principles of Hinduism. If Hinduism lives today, it is due to them.